Hey everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. I want to show you how to use color temperature to fine tune your black and white images. If you do a lot of black and white processing, you're already familiar with color sliders to change the tones in your image. But sometimes certain colors are hard to separate when they fall into the same general tonal range. That's where the color temperature slider can help. This is a photo I took over a decade ago, and I wanted to take a fresh look at it. Although I like the color version, let's see how it'll look in black and white. I'm going to bypass develop for now. I'm going straight to effects. I'll add a black and white filter and see what I have to work with. I can see that there are a lot of similar tones that are hard to separate. The red slider almost does nothing at all. So I'm left with the yellow and the green sliders. The yellow does a little bit of uh, manipulation on the image, and the green also a very small amount. I know there's no aqua, blue, or magenta in this, so they're not even options. I'd like to get a little bit more separation between the goose and the reeds, but I've maxed out what I can do with the sliders. I'm going to turn off the black and white filter for now and head over to develop. Let's head down to the temperature slider and take a look. If I move the slider to the left, I'll cool down the image or add more blues. If I move it to the right, I'll warm the image up by adding more yellows and reds. Modifying the temperature will change how the colors are mapped and will also change how the black and white filter interprets the image. For this image, I'm going to crank up the warmth. I'm going to head back to effects and turn back on the black and white filter. Warming up the color palette has made a small difference, but watch what happens when I move the red slider. I now have new information to work with because I boosted the reds. So I like how that looks. By the way, I didn't use the Color Enhancer filter to do the same thing because I think the Color Temperature slider in Develop has a broader range. Let's add a few more effects to this to finish off the image. First, I'll add a dynamic contrast. I just want to selectively apply the filter, so I'll use a luminosity mask. We'll take a look at the mask right here. The mask is basically just a black and white representation of the original image. The levels control, uh, they work exactly the same way as you would work with levels on an actual image. When I move the sliders from the left side over to the right here, I'm darkening the darks. And when I bring the right slider over to the left, I'm increasing the highlights. The idea in this instance is to isolate the brightest brights. So I'm just going to manipulate these sliders until I get to where I need to go. So about there, you can see that it's just the highlights on the feather, feathers um, and also the edges of the reeds. So if I take the uh, mask view off and then do before and after, it's very subtle, but it works for me. Next, I want to add a little bit more diffusion while keeping that uh, sharp look there on the edges. And I'm going to do that with a blur filter. Um, I'm going to bypass the glow, which does give a nice diffusion, except that the glow introduces contrast that I don't want in this particular photograph. So for the blur, we're actually going to use a blending mode. And for this one, we are going to use screen. And I'll bring down the opacity to about there and the before and after that we can see that it's there's some nice uh, diffusion on that finally i'll add a vin vignette and i'll start with the big softy and maybe pull up the brightness a little bit and just go back to the black and white sliders and just make sure that there's nothing else to change with those new filters added and I think I like where that is now. 
So that's it. Using the color temperature slider can give you more control when converting to black and white. For even more options, you can manipulate the hue and saturation settings in Develop. So here's where we started, and here's where we are now. Before I go, I wanted to leave you with a quick tip. A common question asked is, how do I rotate my image in On One Photo Raw 2018? There's actually a number of ways, so let's start and browse. If I go to Grid View, you can click on either arrow at the bottom of each thumbnail, and it will rotate the image in 90 degree increments. You can also go to the top menu and choose Photo, and you can rotate the image 90 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise. Also, from the Crop menu, you can use these icons to do the same job. Right, like that. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.